Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the crowd, No one who lights a lamp conceals it with a vessel or sets it under a bed. Rather, he places it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not become visible and nothing secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care then how you hear. To anyone who has more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he seems to have will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. In connection with the image and symbolism of light that is not to be kept under the bed or in, inside the vessel, but to be put so that many people will see, I'd like to explore with our reflection today on a very important book in the Old Testament, which is actually considered post-exilic. In other words, for the many times that we have been reading in the liturgical celebration since uh, until last Saturday, today we begin with a book that is specifically considered an account of what really happened after exile, which is actually after 40 years of exile in Babylon. And Ezra is very significant in this because he speaks to us about the rebuilding of the temple. And this is uh, actually identified as the second temple, which is to be built on the very site of the temple, which was the first temple built by Solomon. Now what is significant in today's first reading here is that the building of the second temple is practically including or inclusive of the help that the neighbors and the other peoples Give, gave to the people of, of, of Judah or to those who are in Jerusalem. Compared to the first temple created, built, and provided for by David himself, and then of course constructed by Solomon because he, he was the one appointed by God to do it. The second temple built on the same place is actually a joint effort. And this is what we have to see into the very perspective of the post-exilic period regarding salvation. That it is not only to a particular people, to the chosen people alone, but it is a, it is a salvation that is universal. And that's the reason why if we read towards the end of the so-called post-exilic prophecy, especially in Isaiah, try to Isaiah, the house of the Lord will become a house of all peoples. And this is basically where we are directed towards. All of us, those who are believers of the Lord, those who are Christians, are part and parcel of the temple that is in Jerusalem. Even now, even if it is not anymore in, in Jerusalem. Because the temple was finally uh, destroyed under the Romans in the year 70 AD. But this temple will always be reminding us of how God has touched not only the lives of his chosen people, but of all peoples all over the world. That is why in the vocabulary of the scriptures, you know, in English grammar, people, there is no plural to people because it's already a collective noun. But in scriptures, it always says peoples because it speaks about different kinds of races or different kinds of nations flocking towards Jerusalem, the place where everyone will be in the presence and in the bosom of God, who is the God of all nations, the God of all peoples. Amen. <laughs> 